Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Johnny Rome's and welcome to my one month review of the Sony a7 IV. Over the last few weeks, I've been able to really put this camera to the test in some of my favorite locations in Utah, such as Zion National Park. And I was even able to get down to California, Death Valley National Park, and into the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains as well. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk about my experience over the last month using the a7 IV as my main photography camera and specifically talking about landscape photography. I've mentioned before, but just for those who are new, for the last year and a half, I was using the Canon R6 and the Canon R5, and those cameras were absolutely fantastic. However, I'm a Tamron ambassador, so I have access to a lot of Tamron glass, and Sony is kind enough to open up their mount to third-party lens companies, such as Tamron and Sigma as well, so it made sense for me to switch over to Sony to have that greater choice of lenses, native lenses, should I add, without having to use an adapter. The biggest thing for me, and I cannot stress this enough as advice to people looking at a camera, is you have to find a camera that just feels right when you're using it. And unfortunately, at that time, Sony just wasn't doing it for me and Canon filled the bill. So I was using Tamron glass with an adapter on the Canon R6 and the R5. Then comes along the Sony a7 IV. It solved all of the problems that I had and it felt like I was using my own camera again. Whenever I was using the a7 III or the a7R III as my main camera, it felt like I was using somebody else's and it just didn't have that connection, that emotional connection. It sounds kind of weird, but it's true. Psychologically, I just wasn't enjoying using it. So when Sony announced the a7 IV and the changes to the grip and the menu system, I was very intrigued and I bought it and I fell in love with it ever since. So I ended up selling my Canon R6, Canon R5 and all of my Canon lenses and fully dived into the Sony ecosystem. So that's a little bit of background about me and my choice as to why I went with this camera. Now let's talk about my real world experiences. So to begin with, I went with some friends of mine, some other photographers from Utah, to some places that I'd never been before. One thing that's perfect about this camera for landscape photographers is its high resolution sensor. So the a7 IV has a 33 megapixel sensor, which I believe is the absolute sweet spot for landscape photographers like myself who do a little bit of video on the side and don't like dealing with incredibly large files and just fill hard drive after hard drive. Because they're a smaller file size than like the a7R III, a7R IV, even the Canon R5, it just makes editing and that whole culling process and storing and saving and backing up a lot more smoother and editing just a lot more swifter. Now, when I talked about it in a video prior, I had a lot of people jumping on my case about 33 megapixels being way too much and that the Canon R6 was perfect. I love the Canon R6 and the 20 megapixels was amazing, but I definitely saw limitations. And in reality, industry standard for printing photos is a little bit more than 20 megapixel if you wanna go large. Yes, the argument is there that billboards can be printed on like a 10 megapixel camera, but I like to view my photos kind of close up. And if I'm using a 10 megapixel camera and I'm getting close to a very large print, it's gonna look gross. So for myself, and disagree with this if you will, but this is my experience that I'm just sharing with others, 33 megapixels is the perfect sweet spot for the kind of photography that I do. I think the best thing that I can do for this video is to go onto my laptop and we'll go ahead and work on a photograph together. Okay, so to begin with, this is one photograph that I really wanted to get. So this is Mount Whitney in the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains and right outside this very small town of Lone Pine. I've seen some of my friends photograph this mountain and it's really just a peak that you don't really see in Utah. Very harsh, jagged, spiky peaks and it gets this amazing golden glow. You get this beautiful soft glow before the sun hits it and then you can watch that line just kind of creep down as the sun gets higher and higher. So we're gonna go ahead and edit this photograph. So I'll just do a little bit of zooming in first so you get an idea of how sharp this image is. So we are using a tripod, ISO 100, F7.1, and 1 80th of a second at 150 millimeters. So bear in mind, I'm using a Tamron 35 to 150, and at 150, it's not as sharp as the center area of the lens as you generally get with zoom lenses. 
uh, but still it's very sharp nonetheless. So we'll go ahead and zoom in at 100% and the detail is insane. I think it just helps that the landscape is just incredibly surreal, but we can go ahead and go into 200%. In fact, we'll go into 300%. So obviously 300%, that's very, very zoomed in. You start to get a little bit of kind of degradation in the quality, but uh, needless to say, you could pretty much see somebody standing on that mountain if they were standing on there. This sensor has a lot of detail. And obviously we can see some kind of softness in the corners as you would expect on a zoom lens, but overall, very, very nice. And this is rather a high dynamic range scene. So to start with, we're gonna bring the shadows up just a little bit. I say a little bit, that's all the way up. So generally when I edit, I like to just blast everything to the extreme to kind of get an overview of what I can pull from this raw file. And then I make adjustments just to kind of bring everything back down to how I like it. that is crisp very crisp now generally what I would do after these basic adjustments I would do some local adjustments so I would do some dodging and burning in Photoshop and then I'll do a slight autumn blur as well but just for this one this is kind of my almost final point but it's just crazy how much detail there is in this camera it is really phenomenal Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a very quick rough edit and I do do a little bit more, but just for the sake of brevity, this is just a very quick kind of rushed uh, speed edit as you will. But overall this, I mean, I'm still blown away. Like the lighting there is what made it. And I can't emphasize enough that good lighting makes a photo more than any camera or any lens. But just the amount of data that I can pull from these raw files is phenomenal. Like I'm mind blown by how good this camera really is for $2,500. I definitely think it blows the R6 out of the water in terms of dynamic range and capability. Obviously some tests may say otherwise, but from my general experience, I think it has a lot more to offer in terms of raw image quality. So the next one I wanted to show is this really cool composition I saw. I was really scrambling in this area. So this is Trona Pinnacles uh, in California and very kind of cool scenic landscape. I think Star Trek was filmed. One Star Trek episode or something was filmed here. Needless to say, it's fantastic. The geography and geology is insane. That these pinnacles that kind of stick out of the ground, just a small pocket of them and the light, the evening light there was amazing. So I was scrambling around looking for compositions and I just saw the light catching these pinnacles, casting some shadows from some larger pinnacles uh, to my left. And I thought this would make an excellent wallpaper for my ultrawide monitor. And I'm working on a landscape wallpaper pack that I'll be releasing in the next few months. So I thought this would be an excellent addition. So to begin with, I'm gonna crop at 21 by nine because that's the aspect ratio of my monitor. Obviously when I release the pack, I'll have multiple different aspect ratios. So I'm just gonna go and dive right on in. This is rushed, as I've mentioned. So I would spend a lot more time on this one because this is a rather tricky photograph particularly with what's going on in the background. But let's just take a minute to look at that detail. This is F9, 1 1 60th of a second, 160 ISO, and it was handheld. I wasn't using my tripod. So the image stabilization was really doing its job here because this is incredibly sharp. We don't have any blurring or any movement in this image.
Okay, so we're gonna head over to Zion National Park now. So to keep this video under 15 minutes, I'm not actually gonna show you my editing process and I'm just gonna show you some of the photographs I was able to make in Zion last weekend. So I'm just gonna put some of the photographs up on the screen and I will include my settings as well. So sit back and enjoy. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over a few things as to what I love about this camera for landscape photography. So the battery life is fantastic. I used two batteries in my trip to California over the span of six days, which was incredible. It's the same battery that we've seen in the a7 III and all the cameras that Sony has released since then. And they have just done, Sony has just done batteries perfectly. Far better than what Canon offers currently for their mirrorless cameras and just super impressed with the battery performance. When I went to Zion for a three day trip, two night trip, I just used one battery. And I didn't even know, I was meant to pack my other one with my charger and I left it plugged into my wall in my office. Didn't realize until I got home. So three days of shooting, I still had about 24% battery left, which was phenomenal. Another thing that's great about this camera for landscape photography is the articulating flip out screen. Really allows you to get to different angles without having to go into awkward body positions and you can just adjust the screen to make it easier to look at your composition. So after a month of extended use, Sony have really nailed it on the head with this camera and its design and its ergonomics. If you're thinking of switching over to Canon, don't be too afraid because this feels just like a Canon. Obviously it's slightly a little bit shallower because Canon's grips are amazing, but it's, it's like 99% there. I don't feel bothered by using this and it feels like a perfect camera that's solid, robust, and easy to use. They've updated the dials and the settings that I've covered in other videos, so feel free to check those out. But overall, I think the a7 IV is the perfect camera to use. And if you're looking to invest in a new camera, whether you're shooting from, from Canon and you want to come to Sony or you want to upgrade from the a7 III or something different, even the a7R III, I think this is the perfect middle ground option if you want that improved technology and improved ergonomics and just overall improved performance. You really can't go wrong with the a7 IV. That's about it for this video. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out on Instagram at Johnny Romes, or you can drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and the bell notification. We are so, so close to 1000 subscribers and I'm trying my best to hit it by the end of the month. So I wanna thank you all once again for tuning in and until next time, I'll see you later.